today is the big day. It's aeration day. So if you've been following along with this channel, I posted a video about a week ago showing you what my lawn currently looks like uh, because I was starting to take my lawn down a little bit lower uh, in preparation for today for doing some aeration and some seeding. And I showed you guys how brown my lawn was looking. My lawn was not happy with me. So like in any good relationship, anytime uh, you wrong your significant other and you get put in that doghouse, guys, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You know you gotta go all out to try to make things right again. So maybe you clean up a little bit, you shave your face, uh, you go and you take her out to a nice dinner, feed her some good food, and that's what we're gonna do with the lawn today. So we got the aerator today, so that's gonna be just like taking your car through the car wash, fancying up that ride, get her a nice ride. The lawn's gonna love this aerator I've got today. Then you go and you take her to the nicest restaurant in town, give her that nice five course meal, and that's what I got today. Right here beside me. Got some black beauty, grass seed, and then I got, oh, I got my baby's favorite right here, the old starter fertilizer. So these are just a few things I'm going to be putting on uh, the lawn today. Uh, and you will see over the next week or so, this grass will love this stuff. So it should green up really good. Um, and then we should be just off and running for fall. And so with that, let's get started and let's get out of the weeds. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Weeds Lawn Care. Today we are talking all about fall renovation. Fall renovation includes aeration, seeding, and fertilizing. And these three together are going to get you a beautiful yard. So aeration will provide many benefits that will help your yard grow strong. Some of the benefits are, first, aeration helps with compaction. Uh, if your yard is very hard and compacted, uh, aeration will help to break up the soil a little bit and make it a lot more enjoyable to walk on, just you won't feel all the compaction. And it will also help with your, your grass overall. So when you're running the aerator and it pulls those cores out of the ground, it helps to allow airflow and water to get down in there into the soil to help your grass grow. Next, another benefit to aeration is that whenever you are seeding your grass, it allows some of the seed to get down in the holes and get down into the, the, the grass there so that the new seed can actually have seed to soil contact which is one of the main things that grass seed needs to grow and so whenever you have those cores all taken out of your ground uh, you're able to put the seed down and some of the seed falls down in those holes and helps get down into your soil which will in turn help some of the grass to grow so how the aerator works is it has a roll of tines on the back of it that drop into the ground and as it goes across your your lawn those go into the ground and they pull up cores. So after you aerate your, your yard, the next thing to talk about is seeding. So the first type of seeding to talk about is just seeding on bare ground. So those are for the places in your yard that where grass isn't there at all. Um, and so you're actually just kind of starting from scratch in those areas. So with new seeding, what you want to do is break it down into a few simple steps. First, you want to prepare the area. If you have any weeds in the area, try to get those out. Dig those weeds out of there. Um, if you haven't already sprayed them ahead of time and killed them off, dig those weeds out of there. And then also, if it's dead grass in that there, try to scrape all that out of there um, and loosen up the soil a bit. Prepare that area there. Um, if you have that aerator, run that aerator through there, and that'll help kind of break things up along that, that kind of area that you're working on. So for, for me this year, I had a few areas where I had to just kind of seed uh, from bare ground. I had a few areas that kind of died on me um, throughout this year and just some areas that were struggling. Um, I actually have a part in my lawn where uh, when I was taking it down lower to prepare for it, um, I actually bogged my mower down and my mower uh, blades actually ripped up some parts of my lawn. So I'll actually show you guys all those areas here. 
And then at my friend's lawn, uh, he actually had a couple big areas that he needed uh, to get planted seed on. He had an area where there was a pool uh, previous to when they moved in. And then he had an area that where there was actually a uh, playground set that he had taken out. And so there was actually two large areas that actually needed uh, seeded from bare ground. The next thing you want to do is put down your seed. Um, so look at the grass seed bag that you bought and look at the seeding rate for whichever grass you have. In the back, on the back, it'll usually have two different rates, an over seeding rate for already established lawns and a new seeding rate um, for new lawns. And so for this, if you're seeding on bare ground, you want to use that new seed rate because it's usually going to put require you to put more seed down in that area. So when you get your spreader out, put that spreader to the desired uh, number and desired rate uh, and then spread it across that ground. The thing with grass seed is don't be afraid to put a lot of grass seed on there. Yes, you can overdo it, but if you look and feel like ah, it just doesn't look like there's enough seed there, go ahead and just grab some in your hand and just kind of spread it out evenly across there a little bit. Don't overdo it and smother all the seed because then you're just going to have issues and you're just wasting a bunch of seed. But if you want a nice coverage, just go and look over it. If you don't feel like the passes on the spreader uh, did enough, then just go by hand. Make yourself feel a little bit better and put some uh, across there by hand. Um, that won't hurt anything at all. The next thing to do is to fertilize over the area. So anytime you're going to put down new seed, I recommend actually putting down a double application of fertilizer. The first one being a starter fertilizer. So go out and look in your stores and it'll, they'll always say starter fertilizer on it. Um, and for this one, I got the Menard starter fertilizer. What starter fertilizer is going to do is actually provide all the nutrients your grass needs as new seed uh, to come up. So it's always going to have those three numbers there. So your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are usually always going to be included in starter fertilizer to help get that new grass seed established quick. The next thing I also always do whenever I'm doing any kind of seeding is I also get an organic fertilizer to put down on top of the starter fertilizer. So this is really just going to be a little bit extra. So the organic fertilizer isn't necessarily required, but it's something I like to do to put on top of the starter fertilizer to really get the grass kicking in gear running into the fall. And that's the thing that you'll notice is that the fall is a great time for grass to grow. And so when I put down just a really good application of those two fertilizers, man, it really gets that grass going. To finish off with seeding on bare ground, the thing I like to use is peat moss. Now, most people, whenever you talk about seeding, they like to get straw and they put straw over top of where their grass seed is. But for me personally, I like to use peat moss. The, the reason I like to use peat moss is actually twofold. Number one is that peat moss, whenever it gets wet, it turns a darker color and it gets heavy and kind of holds that grass seed all down in place. And so it's really good if you have any kind of little bit of slopes in that, that when the peat moss gets wet, it starts to hold it down in place, and which will be a little bit better than what, what straw does. The other thing with as far as the peat moss when it gets wet is that it also changes color and gets dark. So it's easy to look out at the areas that you seeded and see whether they need watered or not. The other thing I like about using peat moss is that it just overall looks better. I think it looks a lot more professional and isn't near as messy as the straw and you don't have to clean it up. A lot of times with straw, you're having to go in and actually clean up some of the straw that hasn't broken down um, and actually have some cleanup to do. Whereas peat moss, you never have to touch it again. And then you can actually go through, if you feel like you need to add a little bit more over time, over the new seeded areas, you can just go out, throw some peat moss down over it lightly, um, and you're good to go. And just the color of it alone just makes the whole thing look good because it kind of looks like dirt. So it looks a lot more professionally done. So I love using peat moss and it's also cheap. So that's another good thing about it. So you can see here, there's an, actually an area where I have uh, planted pretty much new seed. Um, and you can look and actually see down through here all the peat moss I kind of lightly put over top of it. Um, and I actually just watered my grass here this morning. So it's actually, you can, it's actually a little bit of a darker color, so it's pretty good right now. This was actually an area that I talked about earlier uh, where my mower bogged down and started to rip the grass up. 
Um, so I wasn't planning on having to seed this, but after from my bad mowing practices, um, ended up having to. So you can see here, it's still uh, wet down in there, so it doesn't need water right now, so it, it looks good to go. But you can just see the, uh, the kind of brown over top of everything, just a light layer of peat moss kind of holding everything in. The next thing I wanna talk about though is overseeding. I didn't personally overseed here at my lawn just because I didn't feel that I needed it. But for those of you who thinks you, your lawn is looking a little bit thin or just worn out um, and you just are getting started in this, I highly recommend overseeding. And so with overseeding, you're gonna get enough grass seed uh, to cover your whole entire lawn. When you look at a bag of grass seed, they will usually have the overseeding rate on it and usually the overseeding rate's much lower than what the new lawn seeding rate is, so it won't require near as much grass seed when you're overseeding. Whenever you're doing that, you're just gonna load your seed up in your seed spreader, set it to the proper rate, and then you're just gonna walk across your lawn applying it very similar to how you did uh, your fertilizer applications and how I taught from the fertilizer application video. So the next thing that I talked about, which I kind of talked about a little bit earlier with the new seeding, but it also goes for overseeding as well, is go ahead and put down starter fertilizer over your whole lawn and then an organic fertilizer on top of that to really kick the lawn in gear and really get that grass going. In the fall, you will make so much progress on your lawn if you put in just a little bit of work. So take that one day right around here in early September uh, when the, the temperatures start to cool down a little bit and put down some fertilizer on top of your, your overseeding and your new seeding areas. Get that starter fertilizer down and an organic fertilizer down. And I promise you, you will see really good results very fast. So an important thing to know whenever you're planting any type of grass from seed is that it needs to stay wet for the first three weeks. The reason this is, is that it's going to help the seed to germinate. The biggest issue that people have whenever planting grass seed is that they are not consistent enough with watering it. The grass seed needs to stay wet for the first three weeks, but not like completely soaked. So don't think of it like when I talked about watering your lawn and getting the half inch down each time. This is more of just getting it wet. So I usually set my uh, irrigation to go off like first thing in the morning, then I'll run it sometime around noon, and then I'll run it again sometime in the evening. You just want to keep that grass wet, but you don't want to soak the areas. But the grass seed, in order to establish properly and to get the most germination that you can out of those grass seeds, you need to keep it wet and you need to be consistent with it. Hopefully as well, we will get some rain help, so then on some days you may not have to water it at all. But whenever you're going any type of new grass seed, if you're going to go through the work, make sure you put in that effort to get the water it needs. So the last thing I want to talk about with fall renovations is mowing. Whenever you do any type of seeding, you want to try to avoid mowing in those areas. So if you overseed your lawn, try to stay off of it for as long as possible. That's one of the reasons why leading up to fall renovation time, I recommend taking your lawn a little bit lower than normal so that way you can it, the grass can grow up and give you more time before you need to mow it again. The ideal time frame to wait after doing any type of seeding would be around two to three weeks. The thing to note with all of that is, is since you're putting down your fertilizer and you're watering your grass because you put down new seed, your lawn is going to really take off. So it's going to be hard to wait two or three weeks because your lawn will literally get up to like your knees if you wait so long, at least that's what you're gonna feel like. In that time frame, if you start to look out at your lawn and you are getting anxious of like, man, I don't know if my mower is gonna be getting through this thing, I can't wait any longer. Man, my neighbor's getting ready to call the HOA on me because I'm not tending to my yard. I mean, whatever you feel like, if you just, or if you just love mowing and you miss it so bad, that you need to get out of your lawn, get out and mow. It's okay to mow. Just be quick about it. Get on your lawn, get off your lawn. And so those are the things I recommend uh, for a successful fall renovation. So in conclusion, lawn is a lot like love. The more you put into it, the more you're gonna get out of it. So make sure you go out today, show your lawn some love, and she will love you back.
And so with that, I'll see you guys next time when we get out of the weeds into a beautiful lawn.